Okay, now it's back. All right. Not sure what happened. Hang on, I don't know. Okay. Uh, yeah, wait a All right. So I don't know what happened with the technical difficulties on there. Anyway, what I was trying to tell you is that we should all take a drink to get started because that's the way we're starting out. Sorry if there's only five of you out there, but then that means me and four of you are drinking. Just don't make me drink alone. Okay, just grab something. Ready? Here we go. Start of the show. Hmm. Wait, you gotta build it up. <sighs> okay. So what I was trying to tell you was that you can't just, I can't sit there on my phone I can't just sit there and talk to my phone as a live stream. How many of you guys have scrolled through TikToks and all these people are just staring at their phones and they're just doing this, oh yeah, this is the new shoes I bought and this is what I'm doing tomorrow and then yeah, I got to go to work and then, Jesus Christ, I don't care what you ate for fucking lunch, man. If I want to watch your live stream, at least make it interesting, you know, come out there and do something, say something. Anyway, so that's the difference. That's the difference between what we do here and remember this gen z kid is usually with me he's not here today uh he's sick and of course you know and anytime your kid gets sick nowadays you're thinking covid so no fever no cough he was sick to his stomach like he ate something so we're kind of watching him he's upstairs isolated shower fans going window open all the stuff you can do i mean you can't really hide from COVID, but you, I'm, I'm saying I'm just not going to make it easy. I'm not paranoid. I'm just not going to be a punk about it. I'm just not going to make it simple for COVID to get to me and my family. That's all I'm trying to tell you. So anyway, I got to check these off here. Gen X mom, who is sitting just off camera, gave me a list. I got to check things off as I do them. Really, so I don't forget anything because I'll fuck it up and she knows it already. So no Gen Z kid right now. He said we covered that. Um, anyway, another one that Gen Z kid wanted me to mention. Do you guys remember Rut Row, the hawk? Uh, about a month ago, uh, there was a baby hawk, not total baby, about this big, and he was in our backyard in the middle of the grass, just standing there. And the dogs had not got to him just yet because uh, they had killed him, but he couldn't fly. He's like figuring it out. So we named him Rut Row because when the dogs did show up, that was the look he had on his face. Like Scooby-Doo, like, row, row, and he looked like, oh, shit. So I didn't want to name the hawk, oh, shit, so we named it uh, rut row. Anyway, we took it and got it out, and it's doing its thing. He flies around, and he, he's coming back now. He's, like, getting really close to, you know, like, maybe coming down and seeing us. He's a little scared of the dog still, but just want you guys to know, everybody was, remembers the story of rut row. He's still in the backyard, and he's coming around. He's, like, getting closer, a little lower, and on some stuff where we can, he didn't fly away from us. He's within 10 feet it's kind of cool check off the rut row story that's done um stuff i'm getting beat up about that's the t that's the title of the next paragraph uh we had a video up uh, that gen z kid did um about the nfl and it got up to a hundred and some thousand views i guess and then they pulled it for guidelines violations and then we appealed it and this is one of the rare times we lost our appeal so Gen Z kid always has a copy of it, went back over it again. There wasn't anything in there that was offensive other than I said, uh, we're talking about Roger Goodell and the, new, the two national anthems. There's going to be the regular national anthem, then there's going to be the Black Lives Matter or Antifa or whatever national anthem. And I was saying that's dumb. It divides people. It doesn't unify anybody. That was my opinion, is that people... They, they get away from politics and they get away from all that stupid shit. They go to a football game. They're buying each other beers and hugging and high-fiving. You just, you, what, you're supporting your team and even the dudes that are next to you, that you, you they're supporting the other team. You, you guys aren't assholes to each other. We're just rivals, but we're all sports fans at that moment. And I said, I don't like it. I think it's wrong. We should leave it out of sports. And I'm just, I said I was getting tired of being inundated with it. Every fucking where I turn around, there's something. So anyway, they pulled it for that. I was thinking about reposting it with a big middle finger on the screen the whole time, but I haven't decided yet. Anyway, so yeah, I'm getting the shit kicked out of me about that. And, I, and part of it was, was that if you, the discussion that evolved around that in the comments and stuff too was, if you kneel during the national anthem, then you're courageous. And if a person kneels, if when it happens, if a person kneels 
during the other national anthem, then you're a racist. And I just fucking lose my shit when you think about how far our country has come. I mean, if, you, if, you're, if you're around my age, if you're Gen X and you're around my age group, you get what it was like growing up in the 70s and the 80s. And that, yeah, there's problems and, you know, shit wasn't right. We're, we're always going to have stuff to fix, always. But man, I never in my wildest imagination thought we would get this far outside of the zone, man. I just, I never saw it coming. I thought there's no way that in reality you could ever get here. And yet here we are. Some of the stuff that I have to put up with and tolerate, I never in a million years would have thought that would even come true. So the NFL, when I'm doing that, scratch my here, check my list like a good boy, get another drink. Um, oh, that Olympic girl, what was her name? Simone Biles. Simone. Um, we did something. I don't know if it was on a podcast or a TikTok. Anyway, he asked me about it about four days ago. And I said Simone was wrong for quitting on her team. Gen X wouldn't quit on a team. I've seen race car drivers drive with their hands broken. I've seen football players play with their legs broken. You don't quit on your team. But, hey, that's just, that's just how I grew up. That's Gen X. That's just what you do, okay? You don't let out. Now, I, and then she quit on them so she could do her personal event. And a few days ago, I had said the only way out of this for her to not look bad is for her to, having her little mental issues, get in the way and have her not do her individual stuff. I thought, all right, she quits on her individual stuff and team stuff. All right, maybe she had a problem and I'm behind you. Okay, but you quit on the team stuff so you can go get your gold medal in yours. Yeah, I call bullshit on that. Well, apparently, I got an email. I wasn't paying attention on the news or nothing. That she she quit. So she didn't she didn't, she didn't do her individual one. So for whatever that's worth, I think that was her only safe way out. I doubt that anybody called her and told her what I was saying. I doubt somebody called her and said, hey, look. Gen X dad, he's got the way out for you right here. I know you look bad in the press, but here's your way out where you look good. I, I don't know that somebody told her that, but I don't know that they didn't. So we're just going to have to leave that up in the air. It's possible. Checking the Olympic girl one right there. Um, yeah. Uh, got to, uh, got to a, a, a real physical argument in the real world, not online with those keyboards. It was, a, it was one of those gender arguments again. And um, I found a way to, <laughs> to end the argument about the, the 27 different genders and all this stuff. I said, stop. I said, look at the CDC official page. They give you a list of all the COVID results, people who've had COVID and survived, people who've had COVID and died. And there's two categories, men and women. M what? Oh, I know that you're going to tell me that the CDC is just behind the times and they haven't got their shit together. Well, or uh, they're a bunch of fucking doctors and they just know it's just like the men and women. And guess what? When you administer medicine, you, there's certain medicines for men and certain medicines for women. You, you got to come clean. I don't care if you want to call yourself an attack helicopter. Go ahead. Feel free. <laughs> you're pretending you're an attack helicopter. Let's, uh, call yourself what you want, but you're pretending, you know. So just let's. That was that was my final argument. I said, go look at that official government web page. Says men and women, shut the fuck up, move on. Let's get out of that discussion. And we did. There, you're free to use that. You're welcome, America. Go ahead. Um, oh man, that video that Gen Z kid did about the Gen X trivia. Like one of the first questions was about ZZ Top and it said, how many members in ZZ Top? And I said, three. Do you realize how many people in the comments busted my balls over that and said, Dusty Hill's dead. There's only two. All right. I'm not sure what planet you live on, um, but I'm sure you're a late millennial or a Gen Z. But Gen Xers, you, we give credit. You know, I don't care how many people die. Someone asked me how many people's in Rush. I'm going to have the right answer. And in ZZ Top, out of respect, the answer's going to be three. I don't care if they're all dead. Three. Okay? So quit writing in the comments. Nobody gives a shit about your childish kid table over the card table in the corner of the family dinner because that's where you're sitting when you say shit like that. Okay? There's three. Tell me that it remind me. You know, Dusty Hill died. No, he died? Really? I didn't know that. Shut the fuck up. Scratch that one off with a big X. Now, before we go any further, something that Gen Z Kid and I have developed, and it's kind of a serious issue, and I'm not going to take a long time mulling it over, but for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, 
there's an issue in sports casting in news um, on the radio. I mean, how many times have you got in your car, turn on the radio, and there's nothing there? It's dead air. There's nothing there. You actually change stations thinking, okay, is something wrong with my radio, or is this station just not broadcasting? We've all done it. Well, dead air costs people their jobs, and dead air is not fun, and you don't want to be part of dead air ever. So we have perfected dead air. We, we, we strive to perfect it. We work on it all the time. We dedicate time to it. So tomorrow, when you go back to work, you can tell your friends, you experienced professional dead air. Ready? And there you have it. But God damn, that was good. Was that good for you? <laughs> that was good for me. I'm telling you, that is the best dead air you're ever going to experience in your entire life. You're not going to find anything like it anywhere. Write it down. Save that part of the video clip. Run to work tomorrow and play that for your friends because they're not going to believe you. It, it, but it happens once a week. Oh, what's the other one? Um, okay. Uh, you guys wanted a story, but I want to tell you something first on my checklist on here. Um, God, one of the biggest questions in emails is about vaccination, vaccination, vaccination. I am not an anti-vax guy, okay? I'm not. I have all my polio, rubella, and then mumps. I got, I got all my shots. I'm not an anti-vax guy. Um, when the flu shots come around every year and they offer it to you, I say no uh, because they're guessing. They've told me, well, we, we picked these three that we think are coming. They come from Asia this way every flu season. We, we think these three are coming. Get your flu shots. And, you know, sometimes they guess right and it helps and sometimes they don't. Well, uh, we have chosen not to take the flu shot for us and our kids for a lot of years. Our kids have been better off for it. They get the flu, their body fights it off, and away we go. Now, COVID-19 is a very serious flu. It's just a flu. It's nothing bigger. It's just, it's more contagious, I feel, from what I'm learning. Um, it does more damage, but it's the flu, okay? It's not cancer. It's not, it's the flu. It's very contagious. Does it kill old people with, and, and people who have weak immune systems? Yeah, you got to Yeah, absolutely it does. Guess what? So does a regular flu season. If regular flu gets people like that, they don't survive that sometimes. It's, but this is more. It's more serious. I got it. I just didn't feel comfortable um, with a vaccine that took a year to get approved. And the FDA has only given it provisional um, permission. I just would have liked to have waited. You know, I'd like to, like to see a little more. It's all. It's all. I'm not an anti-vax guy. But I would have rather just gone through the flu naturally. However, I've got three friends in different places in the country that are pretty high up at individual hospitals, and they have all contacted me and said, COVID-19 is looking for me. They've been very clear. They're my friends. I've been my friends for 30 years, 40 years. It, they have told me that if I get it, man, real fucking big fat white guy, way overweight, I have a slight heart condition. I have an enlarged heart. I have a breathing condition problem and they said you are a prime candidate if you get it you will die from covid most likely and you will die alone and they said that very clearly that if i was going to be in icu no one's going to be there holding my hand gen x mom couldn't be there telling me well we'll pull through no 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 no. you're alone and they told me that and they said and the chances of me surviving it are less than 10 percent with my condition they've seen it there's people in their icus right now suffering from it so it's like take the shot I don't want and deal with the side effects and whatever else comes up or hope I don't get COVID because if I do, it's too late. So with that information, I got the shot. I didn't want it. I didn't like it. I still would have rather not had it. Not an anti-vax guy, but this just wasn't sitting well with me. But I got it because people that are way smarter than me thought in my specific situation... Might not live through it. So, there. Now you know where I stand on that. Quit fucking emailing me if I'm an anti-vax guy. Now, you guys wanted a story about <laughs> some irritating stuff. So, I'll tell you a quick story real quick before we move on. Um, are you getting any questions at all? No, they're just 
No? Okay. You guys can ask questions. If you write, get questions, then Gen X mom will write them down. She'll hand them to me. A big, huge thing about the vaccine. Uh, well, stop. Just move on about the vaccine. Quit it's arguing with each it's other. It's the, not the flu. It's their just Yeah, it's the fucking flu. Okay? Anyway. Um, so, I have personal preferences in life, as we all do. And uh, I was riding my Harley, went to get gas at a gas station, a Chevron. And there's, I don't know, there's like 11 or 12 cars there, people buying food and getting stuff and everybody running around. And this one guy pulls up in this lowered Honda and he was playing some fucking boom box music. Uh, absolutely the loudest. I mean, I don't, I'm surprised his windows were even in. That's how bad his whole car was rattling. His bumper was shaking. But he's just out pumping his gas. And just making that fucking noise with his doors open and his windows down. And I mean, just irritating the shit out of everybody. It's like, all right, I got you, but turn the fucking shit off when you get in the gas station. So anyway, uh, he was, I mean, you could tell on people's faces they, they wanted to say something to this guy, but nobody was gonna. So I got my gas. I was just right next to him. And I rolled up in my Harley and I just sat there and I laid on the fucking throttle so loud more irritating than that guy, I'm sure it pissed everybody off. But you know who it pissed off the most? Was that guy. Because you couldn't hear his car at all. I was just tacking six grand in neutral just sitting there staring at him with my dark glass on my helmet on. And I didn't, I didn't stop till he was done pumping his gas and he drove his car away. Then I let off the throttle. I did get a little bit of a round of applause. Hopefully the asshole learned his fucking lesson. And away we all went. There. There's your story that... Somebody wanted me to say about something. And there's questions coming in. So if you got a question, now's your chance. Why do we live in Bakersfield? Uh, we've covered this before. Our P.O. box is Bakersfield. This isn't a big secret. I'm not giving any, anything away. But um, we grew up in the San Fernando Valley. And we. the short story was we ended up needing to be in Bakersfield. It was central to three obligations that we had at the time. One was up in the Kernville area, one was out in Cambria, and there was a couple down back down in the San Fernando Valley. And we, this turned out to be a good central location to be. It wasn't super expensive. At the time, living like in Valencia and Santa Clarita would have just been a real tough stretch. This worked out better. We found a nice area. So we live here. Um, not that we wouldn't ever move to another place, but that's how we ended up here. It was kind of a necessity of we needed to be close within driving distance of three places at once, and this was one of the best spots to do that. So this is where we planted our roots, and we've been here for 16 years now, I think, 17 years. It's been a little bit. So there's that. Uh, thoughts on the minimum wage. Okay, I owned a business for a while, so I will tell you how this goes. I am against the minimum wage, and I know, I can hear you all screaming at me right now. Now, listen, they raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour. Why not raise it to 20 Make it 25 I mean, let's let everybody buy a house and drive a Mercedes. Make it $25 an hour. Who cares? Um, as, and I'll tell you why, who the minimum wage hurts in the middle of this conversation. You raise the minimum wage. So do you think um, business owners are just going to eat that? Like, oh, well, we're not going to make as much money this year. No. You know, the local hamburger joint's going to charge a few more for their hamburgers. The gas station's going to raise their prices a few pennies. They're not, they're not going to take it in the shorts on this. They're just going to turn around and everything they're doing is going to cost you a little more and me a little more. Milk's going to be a little bit more money. Gasoline's going to be a little bit more money. Everything's going to cost a little more. So guess what? You raise the minimum wage. So me at my shop, I went from you know $98 an hour on labor to 100 Changed my sign. Away we went. I didn't think twice about it. I'm not going to go backwards because you want to pay a living wage to entry-level jobs to a guy pushing a broom at McDonald's. I'm not doing it. And nobody is. Nobody does this. Everyone can get out there and say, oh, we're with you. We're with you. They're going to go change their shit too. Popcorn's going to be a few more cents. Candy, it's going to be a few more cents. That's how it works. So I was in a position where I could give myself a raise to compensate for it. What about you? Can you? You want the minimum wage to go up. Can you, can you give yourself a few more bucks at the end of the week because everything's going up, prices are going up? Can old retired people that are on a fixed income, when all those increases go up, what are they supposed to do? 
What are old people on Social Security and fixed income supposed to do when they just got their money carved out that they can make it and now everything got a little bit more expensive? What are they supposed to do? Yeah, you think about that, did you? Figures. So that's who it hurts and that's why. And what about... Um, like my son was working at a, at a computer store. He works there three years. He starts out at $12, gets a raise, 13 13 50 13 75 14 4, Works his way right up to $15 an hour. He's struggled. He's learned more. He's bought some tools. He's really good at what he does. And you guys raise the minimum wage to 15 And the next jabroni that walks in who has no experience and he's there to dump trash and, and vacuum the carpets... He gets the same as my son, who has really tried to earn those raises. How does that make my son feel? Or your son? Or your daughter? How does it make anybody feel that's really trying, and you just zip, are they they're going to give my son a raise too? To compensate? No. You just don't, you don't understand. You just, it's so easy just to run out there and scream, yeah, minimum wage, everybody deserves to make a living. Make it $30 an hour. Give them some real money. Shut up. What about loud Harleys annoying people? Yeah, I don't buzz through my neighborhood like that, okay? I don't light it up and go into my neighborhood pissing people off. I'm pretty courteous about that, okay? The reason I did it, if you heard the story, was to combat some nonsense. Combating nonsense. What else we got? Your thoughts on... What the fuck did you write? D Division your in the U.S. and what people need to hear about banding together. What, your thoughts on division in the U.S. and what people need to hear about banding together. Yeah, can we uh, come back to that? That's a, that's a podcast. <laughs> I do have something to say on it, but I don't think anyone wants to hear it here. Um, how do you feel about the shit show at the border? Fuck. <laughs> how, do, how do people that voted for Biden live in that world of denial? You know, how do you, how do you, how do you, how do you not... Put the, how come we can't put the military down there? How come like states that want to, how come Texas can't deploy the National Guard? I'm asking. I don't, I don't know why they can't. Why can't you just put everyone on the border and go point the guns and the bayonets and go, don't come over here. Not this way. You go through the legal point of entry. I'm all for it, man. Come to America. But we have certain places set up so we can check you out, make sure you're not an asshole or sick. Can you please come through those? No, we're going to come any way we want. And I'm hearing stories of people that are getting stuck in other countries because they can't get back into our... Americans can't get back into our country because of COVID checks and, and, and misreadings and IDs and all this other shit, but nobody's checking anybody at the border? Are you fucking out of your mind? Another podcast. What else? No more questions? What are your favorite part of growing up Gen X? What's my favorite part of growing up Gen X? You know, you could probably ask any Gen X person this and they would all have a different answer. I think every person, millennials and Gen Zs and boomers even, everybody's got their parts of uh, growing up they like. Everybody remembers their summers and playing in sprinklers. They remember the ice cream truck. I mean, those are all just things that are conditional to the time that we were in. I think I look back on some benefits of growing up in the Los Angeles area during the 70s and 80s that I was very fortunate uh, that it, it's labeled Gen X now, but it could have been Gen anything going up there. I mean, there's some stuff that you look back and go, what a time, the freedom without having to worry about, you know, your kids getting kidnapped every, every time you left them alone for 20 minutes. Um, all the nonsense we're going through now with all the, the political bullshit. I don't remember it being like that back then. I mean, it's true I was a kid, but even looking back on it, I don't remember my parents fighting and arguing about this. I don't, I don't remember that kind of stuff. I, I think the freedom is what I miss the most. Anyway, it's time to drink. Is anybody drinking with me, or am I drinking alone? Probably fucking drinking alone. I've drank alone before, so I'm okay with it, but just so you know, the truth of what's coming up next is at the bottom of that glass, and I got to go get it. So I'm going to go down there and get the truth, and I'll be right back. You, you go get your own truth. Cheers. And my glass is empty, Carol Merrill. All right. Take a break from the, the hard stuff. Let's go to some fun stuff. Does everybody know our email address? Ah, shit. Which side is it on? It's on the bottom. Uh, it's, now it's now on the bottom? Okay, well, where is it? I'll take it. 
All right, this is our email. You need to open up your email, open it up, get it ready, type that in there, genxdadtalks at gmail.com, genxdadtalks at gmail.com. We'll get Genx mom to put it in the comments real quick. But I'm gonna ask you a trivia question, okay? There's prizes for this, okay? There's a, we're gonna send you stuff, and on some of the easy questions, you might get something small. On some of the really cool ones, I'm gonna send you something fucking nice, okay? Something expensive. Well, I think it's expensive. So get your emails out. I'm waiting, letting everybody have a chance to fumble around and do their shit, yell at your kids. Uh, here we go. Okay. So we're going to start with a really, really easy one. All right? You got your email out? Send a trip. It's first one to email the answer. Now, I know the comment section is going to light up. Everyone's going to write in the comments, but you can't win in the comments. You can only win if you send an email. So there's a few of these today, okay? But the first one is a super easy one. If you were Gen X, you grew up when I did. This is going to be simple. You only have to Google it. If there's anybody in here who's Gen Z or late millennials, you're going to have to Google it. Red Dawn, the movie. No, it's not. It's not red colored dish soap for your hands. No, no, no. It's not that stupid movie they made a few years back. No, 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 no. It's the original. Patrick Swayze. See Thomas Howell. In Red Dawn, and everybody knows the story, the high school kids escaped and the Russians and all that. Ready? What did the high school kids call themselves? Yeah. Email. Email. Email the answer. Don't type it in the comment section again. There you go. Where did my pen go? All right. I'm waiting. You guys got to know this. Come on. Send email. Press go. One, two, three, go. Green means go. Wolverines. Wolverines. Who got that? Brian Villarino. Brian Villarino. Almost sounds like a name from Boston or something. Hey, it's Brian Villarino, huh? Irishpunk62 at gmail.com. Irishpunk. <laughs> My man, Brian Villarino. I like that. We got Wolverines. All right, we'll do more in a minute. Um, so, oh, yeah, somebody, uh, let me get one of these here. How many of you guys have watched these live streams before and you know what I'm about to do with this? Nah, you know. You already know. I'm doing it right now. But the score is 7 to 3. Yeah. Real quick, what we do, for everybody who's new and you don't know, I make fun of Gen Z Kid because when he sets up to throw a free throw, he's worse than, worse than Giannis. I mean, he's prepping himself. He's getting his breathing right. He's aligning himself with the stars. He goes through the motions 50 times. I'm like, just throw the goddamn thing, okay? So what we did here during our live stream is we both wad up a piece of paper and we try to hit the camera lens. We each get one shot. He stands here, does his prep work, gets right with God, you know, aligns the stars, practices 19 times, and throws it. Then I have to go around waking everybody up because everyone fell asleep waiting for him to do a shot. And then I do it the way Gen X does. I take a drink of my whiskey, I grab it, and I throw it. And whoever's the closest, and you guys usually have to tell us, you know, if we're, if, if we're way far off, it's easy for us to see. But sometimes we are so close, we can't tell who got it. Um, you guys usually have to tell us, but this time you don't because he's not here. So I'm going to win no matter what. I'm still going to drink. I'm still going to throw it. I'm not going to do it like he does it. I'm going to do it like Gen X. I'm just going to shoot from the hip. So... You guys are the net, this is the ball, I'm the shooter, this is the drink, and this is how we roll. I hit the fucking phone. I hit it. I goddamn hit it. Did you see? I mean, how many of you had a duck from that? Was it that good? It wasn't right on the lens, but it was close. Everybody have to move? Goddamn close. Gen Z kid would not have had a prayer with that one. Not a fucking chance. So, eight to three. Let's remember that for next live stream because Gen Z kids are going to sit here and yell at me. No, no. The score is more tight. It's not tight. Gen X is whooping Gen Z's ass with this one. All right. You didn't hit the lens. I didn't. No, I didn't. But I got close. They said it went right. Yeah. But did anybody have to move? I mean, did it almost hit your TV? Were you watching like on Apple TV or something? You had to move? I don't know if you can watch an Apple TV. Anyway. <laughs> um, okay. You guys, uh, everybody... There's a bunch of, bunch of silly questions that came through, and I'll get to some of these too. But see, I need to see if you guys remember this. 
I actually had to go look it up because no one believed me. When I was a kid, my favorite cereal was peanut butter Captain Crunch. I mean, hands down. There, I didn't like the regular Captain Crunch. God, I hated that. It was Crunch Berries were good, but I wanted to pick out all the Crunch Berries. So it was really cool when Captain Crunch came out with all berries. Loved it. I figured a Gen X came up with that one and said, get rid of the little yellow squares and just do this and we're good. However, and I mean amidst all the stuff that they have, they tried every flavor. There was an orange Captain Crunch chocolate. Uh, there was a ton of stuff. But the one I remember as a kid that everybody said, no, 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 they never had that. And, if, and if, you, if you can't go look it up and you just have to talk with some other Gen Xers, they, they'll argue with me. They'll tell me there was never a vanilla Captain Crunch. I'm like, there was. It, and, and they, you know, all the Captain Crunches have like some little mascot. The peanut butter had the big elephant and the Crunch Bear was some weird fucking doll that looked like something you'd win at a circus event. Um, but it was a whale in the background. And it was vanilla, and there were little balls, just like the, the, the peanut butter crunch one. And nobody had ever tasted it, nobody had ever heard of it. I'm like, I'm telling you, I had a couple boxes when I was little. I know I did. Everybody, no, 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 no. Well, now we have Google. You can go back and you can look it up. And even when you look it up, it's got some dog on there. It's got a, it's got a weird dog, and then it don't make it anymore. I don't even think you can buy it. But... They, it was a real thing. Does anybody actually remember it? I mean, without looking it up, was, does anybody ever remember what I'm talking about? Or am I fucking living in the twilight zone? Because that's what it feels like. I feel like I'm the only person who was holding that box of vanilla Captain Crunch and everybody else are just looking at me, shaking their head like I'm a goddamn idiot. Well, I might be an idiot, but not for that reason. That, for that reason, I was right. Anyway, so I don't know what the dog on the box there was, I'm telling you, there was a whale in the box. It was vanilla. It was a real thing. If nobody else gets it, then fuck. I'm, I'm me and Rod Serling. Got it. We're on our own. Uh, if you even know what that means. Okay. Uh, uh, I don't want to tell that story. That is going to turn to people not going to like that story. I ain't telling that one. What else am I missing over was here? Was it a baby blue box? With the yeah, it was a ba yeah, baby. Gen X mom just asked if it was a baby blue box. Yes, it was a... It was kind of a, a baby blue background box. Yeah. People have your back. See? I fucking knew it. There had to be some people out there. I'm, I, I knew it wasn't just me and Rod Serling. I knew it wasn't just me and Rod. I knew that. All right. Um, bom, 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 bom. Um, God, everything in here is so political and shit. All right. Let's go to some of these. Gen X mom. Bom, bom, bom. Gas or electric cars. Someone wrote... Gas or electric cars. Someone took time to 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 text gas or electric cars. I saw a video of an AC Cobra that was modified, had a Tesla engine in it. That was an abomination. Okay? I saw videos of guys who go to public Tesla charging stations and it's six hours to charge your car. I also see videos where there's big diesel generators running the Tesla charging stations. Well, thank God we have an electric car so we don't have to burn any fossil fuels and we can save the planet. Do you realize that there's coal mills working overtime to generate electricity, pumping their shit in the air that you hate to charge your fucking car so you can feel better about yourself? Somebody wrote me gas or electric car. I'm not even sure how to answer that. If I haven't already, just so you know, I don't, I don't even know how to answer that. That's... I get the technology. I get that it's a novelty item. I get that if there's some out there and you want to buy one, you can own one. But fuck, quit telling me it's going to be mandatory and part of the future. Because it's not. America is still rock and roll and fast cars. And you're going to have to make your electric cars with big speakers on the back that sound like a 442. Or we're not buying them. Somebody said you've never been in an electric car to experience the silent acceleration. The si Someone just said the silent acceleration. You know, why don't you sell that to the Navy? Let's, uh, let's make the Blue Angels silent acceleration. Let's make them all electric planes. Figure out how to do that. 
make them solar powered planes where we can go up there quietly and preserve the environment. Just like those, you guys ever driven the 15 to Vegas and you've seen those big solar plants? You've seen those out there? They, I think it was even partially owned by Google. They built these three massive solar towers, these big fields of thousands and thousands of mirrors to generate electricity. And what they didn't count on was that the desert out there has a, a, a large period of the year where it's cloudy and rainy. Yes, someone should have done their homework. So there is quite a few weeks of the year those don't generate enough electricity, but they have to because they count on that. They count on that electricity. So you know what they do? They burn natural gas to substitute for the electricity that they're outputting to generate it. They, they have, they burn to produce electricity when solar's not cutting it. What? Build another dam someplace. Run it off of hydro. Build a big fucking dam. Build seven big dams. Build them. Run it that way. That's pretty fucking clean. Oh, yeah, we can't do that because there's no way the environmental people would ever let us build a dam. We, we can't do that. There might be a colony of ants someplace that may have to move someplace else. Give your resume about being a mechanic. Give my resume about being a mechanic? I don't... People say they don't, you don't know nothing about electric motors and you don't know... <laughs> Come. Well, I, um, I kind of got out of the game being a mechanic at the dealership level right as electric cars were coming. And yes, I understand a lot about hydrogen and electric cars and I do try to keep up on it. And I do have friends that are still in the industry, but I've been a mechanic since I was 15 years old. Um, and you, you do, you're forced to learn a lot of the electric car stuff. That was not something I was eager to work on. In fact, I would tell my customers I'd prefer not to. It's just I didn't want to be involved in it. But it doesn't mean I don't understand it. it. doesn't mean I don't get it. it. doesn't mean I haven't had my hands on them. I probably had my hands on them than, more than a lot of you. There's some of you who are probably way more educated than me. I'll give you that. But don't pretend that I don't know what I'm talking about with some of that stuff. Because I ask people that are in the industry that are smarter than me. I ask them questions. Why? Because they're smarter than I am. And they give me the answers. Then I pass along the answers to you. And you may look at me and say, I don't know. But guess what? They fucking do know. And they're smarter than both of us put together. So the stuff I'm telling you isn't too far off the mark. Now, I've been drinking a little bit. I'll admit that. My answers may be embellished around the corners. It might not be as rough as you think. But the heart of it's right on. The spirit of the fucking discussion is Americans don't want electric cars. Oh, I know. New Americans do. You guys all with the millennial, late millennials and Gen Zs want to change the world. You get mad at us and you get mad at boomers and you want to come in here and revamp everything this country's been. Well, let me give you an example of how that doesn't fucking work. Get in your DeLorean, go back to 1985 and ask Coca-Cola what it, they happened when they got rid of Coca-Cola and tried new Coke. Yeah, that's what you guys are doing. You guys, I'm going to dub it right now. You guys are the new Coke generation. Let's see how long that shit goes. All right. You like that? It just had the new Coke generation. I hope that fucking catches on. Maybe someone on the Tucker Carlson one night say, hey, we're talking about the new Coke generation. Shit that changes and ain't going to work. What kind of music do I listen to? <laughs> uh, I listen to a lot of music. Um, my wife forces me to listen to country. So I do some of that, but um, mainly it's all classic rock um, from the 50s, uh, 60s, 70s, 80s, and the probably mid 90s. There's some cool shit out there that I like from the new stuff. I'm not going to tell you what it is because you'd make fun of me, and you should. So I'm not going to tell you. But I do listen to a lot of that. The thing that I didn't like is moving to where we live now. Right when we got here, I made some friends and said, "Hey, uh." I'm having trouble finding music on the radio here. And they said, oh, no, no. there's got to look around. We got you covered, buddy. I said, oh, good. They said, we got both kinds of music here in uh, the Central Valley. We got country and Western. That was their fucking answer. We have country and Western. Oh, I was in heaven, let me tell you. Anybody who heard the last live stream that my story about my last serious night drinking bar to bar to bar... If you remember that last live stream, that didn't go so well for me at that country bar. Remember that one? Yeah. Let's not relive that. <sighs> What's better, Harley's 107 or 103? You really want me to get into the details on that? One's more reliable, one leaks oil, one doesn't. Um, all you need to remember about Harley's is true freedom is one down and five up. 
favorite band from when I don't know I there was a phase I went through when I was in love with listening to uh, whatever was on the top 40 in the early 80s in LA and then you got some uh, you know Jesus Rush Ario Speedwagon Aerosmith um, even Journey don't tell me Journey's not a rock and roll band I'll bring Neil Sean and sit him right down here and actually tell him he's not rock and roll played with Santana before Journey um, did I say Rush already? There's just a lot of good bands. And, uh, well, we've talked about ZZ Top and stuff. There's a lot of rock and roll bands. I think I'm more partial to the stuff that I grew up with because it's nostalgia. It's like chicken noodle soup and grilled cheese sandwiches when you're sick at home. You know, you feel good having it. Well, I feel good when I'm listening to that music. It reminds me of a better time in life. Maybe not just a better time in my life. Maybe just a better life back then. So I can't narrow it down to a favorite band. I wish I could. But there you go. There's my rambling on it. Any more questions? We're running out of questions. Trades or college? You guys ask me that once in a while. Go to a trade school or a college. And, they, you know, there's, there's a need for both. Let me tell you. Um, just not everything is suited for each person. You can't tell a person, hey, you've got to go to college. You've got to get a degree. That used to be the case. If you wanted to make some serious money, yeah, you had to do that. It's not like that anymore. In fact, you're going to find that a lot of the trades are, uh, are more... In demand and will pay more right now there's there's uh, electricians and stuff that are making thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars a week as kids because they know what they're doing I mean there's some stuff out there and I'm not talking about your electrician going door-to-door -door and fixing uh, light switches and outlets I'm talking about the guys who fix the power lines and stuff you want to go to trades the, you can you can really do well in your outdoors and doing stuff with your hands they got to put that shit back in schools and I see some of it happening they're beginning to put some of the trades back in schools. They're putting them back. Let's see. Let people go and learn and do with their hands and see if they like it. If they don't, fine. But you got to give them the opportunity. I mean, how many people do you know that are working that went and so if you ask them how they got into their field, they look at you and say, hey, uh, I remember my shop class. I had a metal shop in junior high. And after that class, I, I, I really knew what I wanted to do. And it was something in that direction or a wood shop class or an automotive shop automotive shop you, you you give kids the experience let them try the stuff and then see where it goes you can't force them down one road or the other you got to find out which kid is ready for which thing but trades or colleges they both got their place in america and they're both needed for sure don't get me started on fucking colleges and shit a fucking purple twinkie with all this shit whoa this is a trick question in junior high what was girlfriend's name how, do you know who wrote that? No, I can't remember. Because I got a feeling this is a trick question or a trap. Um, yes, I have known Gen X mom from uh, kindergarten through 12th grade, private school. I got kicked out twice. We covered that already. Um, so I, had, I went to Madison Junior High and then a little bit of Poly, Polytechnic High School. Uh, in junior high, I guess I could probably say her name because she's guaranteed she's not fucking listening. Uh, I don't know if I should say her name. Her name is Julie. How about that? I want to say her last name. Her name was Julie. She was blonde, and she had... She was a Leo. I remember that. But, uh, yeah, junior high, girlfriends. That feels like someone set me up. Some guy or some girl. There's one of my guy friends out there set me up. I'm going to fucking find you and hurt you. Yeah, dead man walking. What the fuck, man? You're going to get me in trouble. Anyway, her name was Julie. There's also a girl named Tracy. And I kind of made out with Julie's cousin, Vicky, for a little bit. But anyway, that Julie. That's the answer I'm going with. All right. That was a fucking trap, man. Don't give me those questions anymore. That's bullshit. What are some projects you're working on? I got a ton of little stuff. I don't know. This is going to bore the shit out of everybody. So I'm going to have another drink. Ready? Everybody got a drink? We'll do a trivia question after this. After this question, we'll do another trivia question. But I'm going to drink. Is anybody drinking with me? Ah, hey, you fucking people make me drink alone. Maybe I'll just go back to the way everybody else TikTok live streams and just hold my camera and talk about what I ate for fucking lunch and what color boots I'm going to buy tomorrow. Sorry. This is the live stream you're going to get. All right. There we go. Everybody out there, thanks for sticking around. Okay, projects. Well, without going into a bunch of the little stuff I'm doing, uh, I think I have drafted on paper 
a way that you could fire a gun and have it make absolutely no sound at all, except for the clicking of the hammer and the actual noise as the bullet displaces the air as it leaves. And I, I'm, I've got it figured out. We'll talk more about it later, but I think I can make it absolutely, not a suppressor. I know in the movie you hear click, 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 and that's all. It's not like that. It's They fucking make noise. But I think I found a way to make an absolutely 100% silent shot. Like you couldn't hear anything but the click and the, and the bullet displacing the air as it, whizzed, as it whizzed out of the barrel. Nothing. Now, I don't know if I can do it like one, two, three, four, five shots. Just working on one shot. But the math checks out. And the design is close to working on paper. Anyway, that's the most curious one I'm working on right there. And now you know that. All right. So why... Wanda, why is my libation empty? My glass is empty. I'm going. I'm going to do a trivia question. Well, I can't be both. Well, you just haul just your pretty ass around there and pour my drink. Lovely. And I'll wait. When you get back, I'll do the trivia. Okay. So you got to do the thing again. Where's the thing? You got to get your email out. Open up your email. Answers only count in email. So you got to do it this way. Can't do it your way. You got to do it my way. All right? Email, email, email. How do we get the answers? email how do we get a gift sent to us if we're the first one answering correctly email not in the comments you can't yell it to me i can't hear you you have to put it in the email all right so we'll make this one for some little something something we'll tell gen x mom this one's got to be a little bit better of a prize all right uh, i'm going to give you a quote from a movie now i'm not just going to give you the quote i'm not just going to read it off here i'm going to reenact it i am going to become the embodiment of the character in fact i will do such a good job you will think perhaps if your eyes were closed it might be the actual actor saying the line and you'll know what i mean all right you got to tell me the name of the movie email me the name of the movie all right so a mayor says to what if you're wrong okay that's what he says and here comes the line he says if we're wrong who cares we'll go to jail we'll go peacefully we'll enjoy it but if we're right lenny you will have saved the lives of millions of registered voters come on i swear to god if i gotta say that again I'm not doing it again. That was perfect. That was it. That was perfect right there. I, I feel so good about it. I'm going to take another drink. Email what movie that's from. Ghostbusters. God damn. Bob and Ramona. Who got that that fast? I mean, do you realize how fast that email came in? I'm not talking about the lightning speed of the mysterious email and electricity. No, I know how that works. I'm saying that that was a real, like a Gen X type guy or girl. That wasn't where they Googled the answer and found it and copied and pasted and said, no, 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 no. If you're doing that, you're going to lose. Because I guarantee you're up against a few people who are going to know what the fuck's going on. Lots of people knew it. Lots of people. Who was first? I just told you. Tell me again. It was Rob and Ramona. Rob and Ramona nailed it within, I couldn't even, I didn't even have a chance to get my drink. Reach for my drink, talk about my drink, drink my drink. And as I'm drinking, the answer came in. Now it's fucking standing. Now we got another one like that. Hey, nobody, is anybody in the comment section saying that that was dead on Bill Murray? It was, wasn't it? No, they said Gen X mom deserves a dozen roses for three jobs at once. Who? <laughs> Gen X mom deserves a dozen roses for th doing three jobs at once? Okay, so whoever said that, you can just move right along. We don't. Candy Heart Sue, she's got my back. Candy Heart Sue, okay, Candy, you need to. You, her head over there is. Don't do that. She, it's already hard enough to live with her as it is. I, I don't need to think she's that important. Okay, this important is good, but that important, that's hard to deal with. 
You gotta stop that shit. Crazy Canuck. Crazy. The podcast. Crazy Canuck. Yeah. Thanks for that. Not about the podcast. Um, the podcast. Most of them are Gen X mom, Gen X dad, and Gen Z kid talking about the past, current events. Gen Z kid and I compare what he thinks about stuff, what I think about stuff, what's different uh, now versus then. Things he think he looks back at Gen X. He's been a student of Gen X for a while now. Um, it's it's kind of fun. Now, there's a political one that I did all by myself because there was a ton of emails, so I just did one, and I covered a lot of stuff about the election. And you can go listen to that and yell and scream and throw shit at me. Uh, we did another one that Gen Z Kid and I just did about the NBA and some quick stuff, 30 or 40 minutes about that. So if you don't like the NBA, don't listen to it. But if you do like the NBA, go check it out. Anyway, uh, yeah, so the podcast, it's a lot of fun. I'm trying to get Bruce Chandler to come up. Uh, he's already tentatively agreed but not for a date yet to be on now that we've got seven or eight episodes under our belt if you don't know who bruce chandler is then that episode won't be that interesting to you but for those of you who grew up in la and san Bernardino, for anywhere from like 1968 to 1990 uh bruce was the fucking man i mean he was up there with rick Dees and wolfman jack and those guys i mean you, the locals we knew that guy anyway so see where we're at okay welcome board are the Dodgers the new Yankees? Okay, so I gotta just I, I understand the question. Are the Dodgers the new Yankees? I just gotta I gotta help you modify your question just a little bit, so hang on. Okay. So we have a question from one of the listeners. Are the Dodgers the new? Yeah, they are new. Um, the new Yankees. No. Um, Yankees have I think 27, 28 World Series trophies. Dodgers got six, seven. Uh, it's a long way from that sort of a dynasty, but we're playing in a different era right now. They're, if we don't mismanage ourselves, we're a good ball club. And we got sticks, and we can hit, and we got defense. And we do have some pitching. It's kind of the thing that's always our weak spot is we just can't get over that hump from pitching. I think speaking about the money. Like we've um, got Matt Zerzer. Oh, yeah. The Dodgers, you, you mean for buying? Like, we're yeah, buying our way? Big yeah. Payroll. I got to say, if you're talking about payroll, which maybe that's what you mean, I, I got to say, I didn't like it when the Yankees did it, and they didn't always do it. Don't think the Yankees just went out and spent, you know, $400 million and won a World Series. They're not always. Sometimes they spend a bunch of money and had to eat shit and go home when they went home early. Um, I don't. I know you. I know there's penalties. You got to pay the luxury tax and all that. It just doesn't. I don't know. Doesn't feel right. But I like baseball the way it was played the old-fashioned way. You know, before steroids, um, before there was conglomerates owning things. I like when teams were owned by the same guy. Not that O'Malley was my favorite person, but you get the idea. I'm gonna say no. I don't. I, in that respect, I get what you're saying. I just. I would say I hope not. I don't. I don't like that. That's my personal opinion, but nobody from the Dodgers front office ever calls me and says, hey, we're about to do this shit, and we want to know from a real lifelong fan, what do you think? If they fucking call me once in a while, I mean, we could work out some of this shit. Save the Dodgers organization some embarrassment. You never know. All right, so I still got a few things on here, and I got a couple more of these things, so we're almost done here. Um, fastback Mustang or Stingray? I've always been a Mustang guy. Uh, well, maybe not the fastback, um, but Mustang, 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 Mustang. It's always been one of my favorite cars to work on. I've owned a bunch as a kid. Uh, I don't own one right now, but I'd like to again. Uh, maybe a 70 would be my choice. That'd be my first choice. Stingrays, I, not, I'm not going to knock it. I'm just, you asked my preference. So don't give me the Chevrolet Ford speech. Just shut the fuck up, okay? All right, a couple more questions here. Do you think there should be a, a, stricter. a stricter salary cap? Yeah, that's a baseball question, a team question. I think it should be for every league. I think that you work within what you're given, but then you got to then players would say, "Well, I'm worth this much." I mean, look at Michael Jordan. The last year he played. He made $30 million, was it? $30 million for one season was more than other entire teams' salary. 
Was he worth it? Yeah. Did they pay it? Yes, they did. But if you had salary cap, that would have been kind of tough. I don't know. I'm, I, I like the salary cap idea because it fucking makes things... You got to fit in. You, everyone has to fit in. You can't just take all the money for the whole team. If you're going to get all the money for the whole team, then you're going to be the only one out there in the outfield. You're going to be the pitcher, the catcher, and you're going to field all the balls too. That's a tough one, isn't it? You know, especially when money, when, when you believe in capitalism, which I believe in capitalism, that's tough. That's a tough one because baseball is a business. I know it's a sport, and it hits me at home like a sport, but it's a business. And I don't have any right to tell them what to do. I just kind of got feelings on it like, I wish things would happen differently, but I'm not going to stand out in front of Dodger Stadium with a sign and wave it. What do you miss the most about the world when you were a kid? No fucking bills. I didn't have to go to work. I didn't know how the heat stayed on in the wintertime. I didn't know how the air conditioning ran in the summertime. All I want to do is go to the corner of Lull and Allot Avenue in Van Nuys and throw my shit down by the fire hydrant on the grass and me and all my friends would line up our bicycles and play baseball and wait for the ice cream truck and listen to a battery-operated radio. That's what I miss most. As probably most everybody does. I miss being a kid. I miss the no responsibility part. Oh, there's, there's benefits to being an adult. Don't get me wrong. Um, but this... Yeah, when you're a kid, yeah, that's what I miss most. All right. One more question here, then I'm going to do a trivia, another trivia. Now, the hardest trivia is coming. Uh, Gen X Mom's new mugs. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, as you guys know from the every live stream, I'll take one. Uh, Starbucks makes state mugs. This one's from Washington. It's not a city. It's a state one. Um and yes, we could buy them all online. It'd be easy. Order them online. You get all the 50 states. So that's not the avenue Gen X mom has taken. Uh, she would like to have mugs from places where someone actually walked in, purchased a mug, and sent it to her. I don't mind paying for it. Just tell me. If you say, hey, it cost me this much to buy it, so I'll pay you for it. But she would just like a collection um, of, of the ones from, you know, that are, someone actually took the time to go grab it off the shelf. Anybody can order it. That's easy. It's just, I guess it's more of a hands-on Gen X thing because she's Gen X also. Uh, so yeah, we got a few, but we don't have hardly any from the Midwest, the deep South back East. There's a bunch we're missing on there, but if anybody ever wants to email her, uh, you guys got the email address. You know what the email address is because you're going to do trivia in a minute. If you just send it to her, she's very much appreciative of that. I don't mind reimbursing anybody who gets something, but she just likes someone to have hands-on Starbucks state mug and get it to her. So there, yeah, now you know. Oh, that was that question. All right, so got to have another drink. One more, and my glass needs to be refilled immediately. I'm not sure why my glass stays empty for so long. I'm not sure what kind of establishment you're running around here, but it's not up to par. Don't, she raises her hand like she's going to hit me. <laughs> All right, waitress, need another shot. All right, so we'll do another trivia. Get your email opened up. You got to answer through email and you got to answer first. This is another one. It's about a movie and it's me. I'm going to impersonate someone for you. Now, I know I did such a good job last time. I pretty much gave it away with the impersonation all on its own. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I, I can turn this down, but I can't turn it off. So you're going to have to bear with me. Get your emails open. Another trivia. This is the hardest trivia. This will be the biggest prize. And I have to wait. I have to fill time, not with dead air, while Gen X mom, uh, she filled my glass, walked. Phil, that's all I get out of this? What am I, sipping brandy with cigars in the Titanic? God, good Lord. All right. So, trivia, uh, Gen X trivia. This is another movie. The movie. First of all, what you drinking? Uh, I'm drinking Old Number 7. And I'm drinking it out of a... Ah, shit. Who are these guys again? Ben Shot. Ben Shot. These guys make these glasses with the Second Amendment written on the back and the American flag 
and a bullet in the glass. Ben shot. These guys are badass. They really are. I dig them. And now, now I'm gonna drink, because I can. All right, this is a movie. The movie is Beverly Hills Cop. Now there's a bar scene. Yes, it might have topless women in the bar scene. So um, this is uh, the rated R section of your memory. And uh, Axel Foley goes in and they're just uh, swinging around and having their shit. And then two guys come in and they're gonna take the place down. So Axel Foley and Officer Taggart uh, kind of get ready to take him down. Now, Axel Foley comes up, if you remember the scene, and he comes walking across the room like he's drunk. He says, Phil, Phil, is that you, baby? They said it wasn't Phil. I said, that's Phil, baby. And of course, he gets pissed and pushed him. He says, Phil, what's going on, baby? You changed. What you doing, Phil? Taggart, the other officer, goes around the other side. Now, do you remember how Taggart was dressed? No, I'm not going to ask you what clothes he was wearing. I wouldn't even know that. I'd have to ask my parents what he was wearing. But he's, he's like a fucking asshole golfer, in my opinion. Anyway, Taggart, dressed this way, got into the titty bar, pretending to be somebody. Axel Foley introduced him. Don't you know who this is? This is, and he said, who he's pretending to be. And let him in the club. Who did he pretend to be? That's what I'm asking you. That's what I want to know. Who was he imper loosely impersonating? There's your trivia question. You get that one real quick? I'm going to be fucking impressed. Gerald Ford. I Are you fucking kidding me? Somebody got it that quick? Renee Peterson. God damn. I got to stand up because my fucking knee. Yes, I still have my torn meniscus. No, they won't operate on me because I'm too fucking fat. Ah, God damn it. Somebody got it that quick and didn't even have time to take a drink, take a breath. Who got it? Renee Peterson. Renee. Good God. Jesus Christ. I, when I give you these trivia questions, you guys can... There's lots of people. Can you fake it for five seconds? For God. I mean, I know there's some Gen Xers out there who snap this shit up fast, but come on, baby. Give me, give me a chance. Let me stretch my knee for a minute. All right, Renee, you're going to win the big prize. Oh. All right, so also, God, I can't believe they got these questions that fast. It almost makes me, almost makes me cry and proud at the same time. Um, so somebody always asks me about what are you going to do if they come door to door about the vaccine? And oh, while we're here, do you have any guns? Oh, and while we're here, who are you registered to vote for? Yeah, I got, I got all that. I, I know that that's a possibility. So I have thought of a phrase, or I came up with a phrase, uh, that all the Gen Xers can use. We can be polite right at the front door. We can open the door when they start with their shit. We can be polite until they put their foot in the door. And you know that trick. When you're a candy bar salesman, you set the candy bar in the open door and they can't shut the door. Well, I'm sure these people will have something similar. And when it's time for Gen X to get real stern about these type of questions, invading our privacy, trying to enter our home, after we've asked them to leave, I think I've come up with something that we can all look them in the eye and say clearly that might set the record straight on who the fuck they're dealing with. Perhaps we could look these people in the eye and say, if you're going to continue pressing me about these issues, I sure hope you like hospital food. Yeah. Why don't you write that down, just in case. I'm sure that would get the point across. And who came up with that line? Nobody. <laughs> There's probably one person out there who understands what I just said. Who came up with that line? I'm sure hope you like hospital food. Nobody. I mean, one person, but that's funny, huh? That the one, but, but that was funny, right? That one person who got that? Come on, that was funny. Anyway, you should write that down. 
I think that's the way we deal with the new uh, census takers, vaccine door-to-door -door salesmen, do you own a gun and who are you registered to vote for? people that come around they're going to come around in groups too they're going to come alone not going to be like that guy knocking on your door with his clipboard asking if you want solar panels it'll be it'll be three or four people and the dude at the very back that's not talking that's the guy you got to talk to okay that person is the one you got to go come here because he's the only one that matters these other two jabronis up front no they won't count just so you know so you're welcome america you can have that one for free all right no more questions. Why? Wow, you guys are out of questions. The last one. No more questions. Why Harley over Indian? Who said? Uh, although, there, it, I, I love Indian. Oh, man. I, I no problem with Indian at all. I would ride side by side some riding Indian. Absolutely. Um, why Harley over Indian? Well, just Harley. Because uh, I've always ridden a Harley. And... Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna tell you that there's some loose ties with my uh, biological side of my dad's family. To uh, well, these are just hardly. That's my choice at the moment. So, so I thank you. Know what you think of Bezos going to space? Oh, Jeffrey going to space. Um, thought it was funny what NASA did. I think it was funny that NASA reclassified what an astronaut is <laughs> right before he went. It's like, no, you're not going up high enough. You're not an astronaut. Eh, you know, that's, that shows respect to all the people that are real astronauts. It does. I mean, you just you can't just go real high and float back then and go, hey, I'm with you guys. No, you're not. You don't get a mission patch. Your name doesn't say NASA. No, you're not nearly the same. But fucking billionaire, man. He went up in space. Pretty fucking badass. Well, kind of space. Technical space? Is it? Didn't he just like cross the threshold of the, now we call it, space i don't know miles it's not it so here's a really good one yeah do you think they'll ever change a name change sorry ever try and change the name of the indian motorcycle do i think the question is do i think they'll ever try to change the name of the indian motorcycle uh no in fact i don't even know that i know where the indian motorcycle name came from now i want to know i want to look it up and do some homework on it but now, this is not going to be disparaging against baseball fans. I'm a baseball fan. But there's certain things that even the woke movement can't touch. Okay? There are. And, for instance, um, that'd be like taking the woke movement with uh, AOC and uh, all these other people and coming up to the Hells Angels and saying, you need to change your name because... Uh, we don't believe in heaven or hell. There is no God. And you can't force everyone to think that there's a God. And your members may not all believe in God. And you're saying hell's angels. So therefore, you're clearly indicating that there is a heaven and a hell. We want you to change your name. How the fuck do you think that would go over? Okay? I know this woke movement is out of control. The pendulum has swung as far as it can. And in my opinion, that pendulum's starting to come back the other way. People have had enough. It's slowed down. People are going, I don't give a shit anymore. I get it. Black Lives Matter is another one. I get it. I, I'm, I'm all for you. I don't, want, I don't want black people abused. But you, you have now pounded it in my head so much. I just, I've, I'm desensitized. I don't care anymore. You took it from something special and something important and you just fucking normalized it. And then you went even further and beat it into the ground where, yeah, Black Lives Matter far out. Oh, uh, you know, it's it. Uh, there's no, there's no impact anymore. Did you forget the question? What's the question? <laughs> Will they take the Indian? Oh movement? yeah. So the the they woke said, movement. Somebody said victory owns Indian. Yeah, uh, I just, I'm, I'm just telling you that there's some things you can't change. You're not. There's some motorcycle clubs. They're just not. I doubt that someone could go up to Indian and say, or Victory Cycles if they own it and go, hey, we're upset with that. You're gonna change the name. They go, go fuck yourself. Don't buy one of our bikes then. They don't, I mean, there's just, there are certain corners of this country that are not going to change a tradition and they're not holding on to the dish, to the tradition to be insulting. I promise you, there's not a Cleveland Indian who's out there, a fan who's wearing the Indian jersey as disrespect to Native Americans. It's not, it's not what he's doing. He likes his ball club. There's not a guy riding an Indian motorcycle you know, from 1966 that says, yeah, fuck Indians. He's not doing that. He's riding a fucking Indian bike. 
I mean, you think that guy's going to peel the, the chrome off the side of his bike and pop all the th rivets out of it to change the name? There's just certain parts of America you're not going to fucking change because you woke up one morning with a feeling about it. I'm sorry. There's, just, there's, certain, there's a lot of changes going on, but there's certain small pockets of stuff that people are going to hang on to. Do I think they're going to change the name? Any? No fucking way. No. There's just certain people that go, you know what? We'll close a fucking company before we bend our knee to you. I got a feeling that Indian motorcycles would be along that same line. There's stuff that needs to change. I mean, there is. Like that whole argument everyone gets in with statues being torn down. I get it. I, I understand. You know, the, the dude is a fucking asshole. But do you realize that you'd have to take down every statue and change every dollar bill? Because if all those founding fathers had slaves at the time? Yeah. You had to change it all. Change everything. You know, some things may be better off left alone as a standing example example of shit you don't fucking do. Maybe some of that, maybe some of it should be left up like, hey, instead of revering this statue for this guy, we're leaving him up there, but let me tell you how he fucked up. Hey, it's some good stuff. But there's some stuff fucked up too. Maybe, maybe some shit should be left up as an example. That's just my opinion. What the fuck do I know? I'm just a dumb mechanic in the middle of the desert and who's out of Jack Daniels again. That's the truth. Um, so there's, there's places that I don't think will change. I think that Indian's one of them. I don't know. Did that help you? Okay, is there any other questions? Because we're almost done. I'm going to run through my stuff here. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Not going to tell that story. I'm not going there. Uh, I will tell a story about the greatest... I have two stories about the greatest pizza I've ever had in my life. Now, the first one's kind of a no-brainer. Um... I was with Gen X mom in Vegas. We went out the back door of the Hard Rock Cafe. We saw Journey as a concert. And she finds these weird places on, what is it, diners? <coughs> diners, drive-ins, and dives. And she says, hey, there's this place which so is within walking distance, a mile or so, and it's late. And um, we walked there. And it was a pizza place. And I mean... The glass, this old building with the glass front of this building was right on the sidewalk and there was four feet <laughs> and the curb. I mean, you sat inside, you were six inches away from the curb and we got there right as they were locking up and nobody in the place, they, they were just turning the key and the owner says, nah, come on in and he, he made us a pie and I'm like, all right, and she's thinking, oh, this is the, the, the pizza and I'm like, pizza is pizza is pizza. There's good pizza, there's bad pizza, there's great pizza, but it's pizza. Boy, was I fucking wrong. This cat made a pizza, and I wish I could remember the name of that place, and I can't. He made a pizza that absolutely melted in my mouth, and I tasted all 37 flavors. I couldn't believe it. I told He locked the door. We were the only ones in there. The owner came and sat with us, and, you know, we're nobody special. We're just two people hanging out wanting a pizza in the middle of the night. And uh, that guy, I'm telling you, that fucking guy made a pizza like nothing else. That's my favorite pizza. Now, my favorite pizza story is I was, I'm going to say, 16. I was working at Grace Community Church as a janitor. We're all wearing our red shirts. And I was trying to date a girl named Georgia Quesnell promise you she's not watching and she worked with a couple of friends of mine at the time matthew perillo and edward perillo and their dad owned a pizza joint i think it was down in burbank and i was trying to date her and we were talking to so she shows up i guess after closing time with a pizza and of course i'm 16 so she girl brings a pizza in all my buddies as janice making fun of me and teasing me and laughing at me oh you're a bunch of pizza and girl but anyway this pizza was an extra large pizza that had to weigh 20 pounds. I mean, 20 fucking pounds. This thing had to be this thick. And I knew right away it wasn't gonna taste good because how do you cook a pizza that's that thick with layers of stuff? I mean, it didn't make any sense, you just can't. And we opened up that pie and took slices out and that tasted so fucking good. 
<laughs> which means Georgia probably didn't make it. It means that Matthew or Edward probably made it. But that pizza with that girl that one time when someone says, hey, your best pizza, it's kind of like listening to a song in the 80s It's a one-hit wonder <laughs> and you never hear the band again. Well, that girl, that pizza, that time, that's my one-hit wonder for a pizza. And I guess it was when I was 16 or so at Grace Community Church at midnight. <laughs> We're all working. So somebody asked me about something with pizza. There's my two pizza stories right there. What's, all right. What's your cutoff for Gen X and Millennial? What's my cutoff for Gen X and Millennial? You know, they've kind of unified the websites now. They're all pretty lined up. Um, there used to be some years of discrepancy, but if I remember right, 1965 to 1980 or 79 might be the cutoff. That's, supposed, that's supposedly Gen X. So you'd have to go look it up. I'm sure if you really wanted to, you could find one, a website that was a little different, but that's the, that's the norm. So after 1979, 80, you're considered millennial. But I've learned that millennials, up until about... 83, 84, right in there, they're badass. They're fucking like Gen X. In fact, they call themselves millennials with an X, Xennials. They call themselves that. Hey, since you're over there. No, I'm good. So they call themselves Xennials and with good reason. Um, they think and act very much like us, like Gen X. They don't put up with a lot of shit. They know a lot of the same stuff we know. They're, they're fucking Johnny on it, I gotta tell you. Um, when you say you don't know shit from Cheyenne, yeah, we're not really talking about them. And they want to separate themselves desperately. I've gotten into heated arguments. They're like, hey, don't you fucking call me millennial. That's those guys down there. I'm over here, Zennial. I'm, 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 I'm millennial with an X. I'm here. They're not wrong on that. Those fucking cats are cool. It's all right. There you go. So now you know. That's the, that's the cutoff. And I, I forget if it's 79 or 80, but it's, it's right there on the line. My, both of my brothers are Gen X. There's, I was 67. Um, one brother was 76. My other brother was 79. So definitely, we're all three of us in the, in the Gen X profile. Are we done? Everything else good? Okay. Listen, uh, as you guys know, Gen Z Kid is normally sitting right here with me with his own microphone. He is sick. Uh, we don't know what it is yet. Uh, no fever, no coughing, so we're hoping there's no COVID-related stuff in there, which we don't think there is, but he's upstairs and showered and changed, and he's clean, and the windows are open, the fan's blowing out. We'll see what happens. Um, uh, oh, do you guys, how many of you know Tex and John? They're, uh, they're going through some stuff right now. So if you guys believe in prayer, help them out. Um, you know, they're, they got some stuff going on up there that's just medical stuff. It's not, you know, personal, personal stuff. But they could use every ounce of support that you guys got. And I'm giving it to them, too. I love those guys. Tex and John are the guys that we would aspire to be uh, at their level. And we'll never get there. But it's always something you shoot for. So, good guys, totally cool cats, um, been on TikTok a long time, doing a good job. The, um, oh, yeah, Gen X mom just beat me up about the podcast. We'll tell you guys about the podcast. We're going to do another one tomorrow and put it up. We're trying to do one every week or a little sooner, trying to cover all the questions you got in the emails. Um, oh, yeah, so anybody who wants to buy me a beer, that's how you do it. You send me a shot of whiskey, you send me a beer. There's the Venmo. And uh, if you guys send me something, one guy sent me something. He bought me whiskey for a, for a whole week because <laughs> I only drink on the weekends. And the fucking cat gave me that stuff. So there it is. You write it down? What are you doing without your pen? Come on, man. Anyway, so if you spend $10, there is a Gen X certificate that I have invented that has a description of what allows you to be Gen X. What do I know? I've just, just been there, done that. But we sign it, we put your name on it, we hand sign it for you. It's important, it's kind of cool. And uh, Xennials get to be honorary Gen X. Anyway, so that was it. Uh, there's the podcast, it's, um, oh, Gen X Talks. Pretty much, what does is, what is, uh, Gen Z kids say? Wherever podcasts are sold, <laughs> there's where you can find the podcast stuff. There's only eight episodes. If you got some time to waste, that's how you do it. Uh, also, all the TikTok videos, 
you guys go, hey, cool music, cool music, cool music. Gen X mom has gone back and listened to each TikTok video, taken the song in order of each video, and put them into Gen X Talks playlist. I think there's five or six up right now. So they're on Spotify. I don't know if they're anywhere else, but they're up. If you have Spotify and some other stuff, just go find them. You want to listen to the same music you're hearing on the TikTok stuff you and I grew up with? That's where it is. And there's other playlists out there, but yeah, this one's ours. Anyway, that's about it. So I'm going to go, and I'm going to drink my last shot with everybody else. And Still waiting for my rainy day to listen to number eight. <laughs> still wait. You cannot listen to number eight until there's a number eight podcast until it's a rainy day. I'm sorry. We covered that in the beginning of the podcast. Go listen to it. Anyway, um, next week, next Sunday, uh, Gen Z Kid will be here. Sorry about the technical difficulties in the beginning, but that's the way it goes. Uh, raise a glass. Raise a beer. Anybody got anything? Last one. Come on. You, you let me drink my last drink to say salute and get out of here, and I'm by myself again. I know there's only five people watching, but Jesus Christ, can a couple of you bring it up? All right. Here's a drink. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you guys on the flip side. Why anybody would want to spend an hour with me is beyond me. But there it is. All right. What are you going to